Greetings from the Jazz Cloud, I'm Richie Zone, and in this video I bring you the seventh in a series of 10 tips to improve your jazz guitar solos. And tip number seven explores and answers a very important question. To swing or not to swing? Coming up next. Welcome back to the Jazz Guitar Channel, and if this is your first time and you want to learn all about the art of playing jazz guitar, this is the place. So be sure to subscribe and don't forget to click the bell notification icon so you won't miss anything. In the previous lesson, my sixth tip was on the use of dynamics and articulation. In the video, I demonstrated how to add an entire new dimension to your solos with the use of dynamics. That is by efficiently combining soft, medium, and loud note attacks. And I also taught you the use of different articulation techniques, such as playing staccato or legato. However, even if we have the best use of dynamics and articulation, there is one crucial element that, if missing, is bound to make us fail, at least as jazz improvisers. And that crucial element is the groove. Duke Ellington made a timeless statement and reinstated an immutable law for jazz players of every generation when he wrote, it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. So what is swing? To better understand swing in the mainstream jazz context, it is first important to understand swing eighth notes versus regular eighth notes. When playing a pair of swing eighth notes over a beat, it is really as if we were playing an eighth note triplet, where the first two eighth notes are tied and are heard as the first eighth note or downbeat, while the third eighth note of the triplet is the second one, and it is heard as the upbeat. As a result, both eighth notes are not of the same duration. The first one is actually longer. So for eighth notes over a measure of 4-4, four, four, we would hear long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short. So even though we are in 4-4 four, four time, there is an underlying 12-8 feel. Therefore, the true feel is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. In other words, three eighth notes per beat. And when we stop feeling this, we start placing the second eighth note right on the beat instead of on the third eight note triplet. And the groove falls apart. So not feeling this undercurrent of 12-8 is actually a recipe for disaster when it comes to swinging in your solos. After all, this is the rhythmic essence of jazz, whether we are comping or soloing. If you've played regular blues before, which I'm sure most of you have, an easy way to um, associate the feel of swing eighth notes to something you already know is to recall a shuffle. And I'm just going to make use of our old friend, <laughs> the power chord, to demonstrate this. So uh, a shuffle is usually Extract the uh, 
ride cymbal, a pattern that drummers use when playing straight ahead jazz. So we start with the quarter note on beat one, and on beat two, we play the uh, uh, swing eighth notes or the, the uh, shuffle pattern. So it would be like this. The second component of swing that we need to understand is syncopation. One common definition is a deviation from a regular expected rhythmic pattern, often placing stress through dynamic accents on weaker beats or omitting stronger beats. <laughs> so as you know, we have downbeats and upbeats. At a medium tempo, which is usually ideal for swing, we want to subdivide in swing eighth notes. So the first eighth note in each beat is the downbeat, and the second one, the upbeat. Of course, this is relative because at a real fast tempo, we subdivide in quarter notes and we feel the first and third quarter notes as downbeats and the second and fourth as upbeats. In either case, a simple formula for syncopation is to start a note on an upbeat and hold it over the next downbeat. The alternative is to simply accent the upbeat and place a rest on the downbeat that follows. So next let's look at uh, how syncopation takes place in Dukes. It don't mean a thing. And the melody goes like this. Here's the syncopation. So let's analyze this uh, syncopated phrase, which is about a little over three bars, three measures. And it is all based on a displacement of uh, an eighth note followed by a quarter note. So it starts on beat number two. One, two, three, four, one. And we have syncopation happening on the upbeat of two. And then on the second measure over the F7, we have it happening on the upbeat of one and also on the upbeat of four, wow. And then on the third measure over the B flat six, it happens on the upbeat of three and the combination of the uh, rhythmic displacement and the syncopation happening over all these measures is what makes this tune swing so much. So let me improvise a little bit over this great tune by Duke Ellington. So that covers my seventh tip. In the next lesson, I will show you how to add rich color to your solos with the use of upper extensions. Don't miss tip number eight. As usual, I'd love to hear your comments and welcome any questions you may have. Have fun and I will see you in the next video.